All right, for this video, I wanted to talk about the Section 199A QBI deduction for rental real estate properties. So the Section 199A, this was implemented in 2017 with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And what this does is it provides a 20% deduction on qualified business income, right? So in order to have this QBI, you have to have income flowing through from an eligible trade or business, right? It can't be an investment activity. And so this is significant for real estate enterprises because rental real estate properties are generally treated as investments, right? They are per se passive and they are per se uh, an investment activity. However, depending on the level of activity conducted in the real estate enterprise, you might get to a point where it actually qualifies as an active trade or business, right? And so now we have entering here the safe harbor, right? So the safe harbor published by the IRS, RevProc 2019-38, this provides a little more kind of quantitative uh, guidance as to what will give rise to a trade or business in a real estate context. And this is important because what is a trade or business under the code really isn't well defined, right? We, we have guidance from the IRS, we have tax court cases, but there's really nothing that's concrete that we can look to to figure out whether we have an active trade or business. So the, the red proc here, uh, has four main elements, right? So the individual or the RPE, the relevant past serenity. So if we're, if we're doing this analysis for a partnership or an S corporation, you have to meet all of these four elements, right? And these are laid out in the revenue procedure. So here are the four elements. And on the uh, next slide here, we'll look at a little more detail as to uh, what each one entails. So in order to meet the safe harbor, you need to have all four, right? So the first one, maintain separate accounting and financial records. Now, this one is kind of obvious and you should already have it because if you're running a real estate business or you have you know, just a single real estate property, uh, you need to keep financial records to track your income and expense, right? Because ultimately you've got to file a tax return to report these amounts. And so you're gonna need this information already. The next elements, uh, are where we get, uh, where, where more enterprises are really relying on this revenue procedure, right? So 250 hours of rental services have to be performed per year. So in the RevProc, they lay out some examples of what constitutes uh, a, a, res a rental service, right? So services include uh, advertising to rent the property, negotiating leases, reviewing applications for tenants, collecting rates, uh, rents rather, um, you know, the daily or weekly operation and maintenance of the property, um, you know, supervising employees and contractors that you hire to do work for the property. All of these things uh, qualify as rental services. And the rental services, the hours, the 250 hours, it can be done by the owners themselves or it can be done by employees or contractors hired by the owners to do work for the, um, for the property. Now, at a high level, what, what the IRS is trying to get at here is, again, a rental property is per se passive and it's per se just an investment, meaning that you don't have to do much work uh, to keep that property uh, up and running and you know collecting rents you know paying the bills things like that so that's why it's generally treated as an investment activity however if you can show that you're spending a significant amount of hours managing the property taking care of it fixing it up supervising employees contractors the level of involvement now it, it, it surpasses a mere investment right so it surpasses a mere passive investment and now you get into that active trader business uh, realm and so that's what this safe harbor is is trying to get at is okay look if you can demonstrate that you've got the 250 hours you got a trader business right you don't have just a mere passive investment activity okay now the other piece here is you have to maintain contemporaneous records of those hours and the best way to do this quite frankly is timesheets right so you have weekly timesheets where you as the owners if you're doing something um, you know, you're tracking your time, you're listing what, what it is you're doing on that day, um, you know, clocking in, clocking out. You do whatever you can to really, really solidify the hours that you're working, 
uh, throughout the year so you can meet this 250 hour safe harbor and then require the same of any kind of contractors or employees that you might hire to do the work as well and then if you do find that you meet the safe harbor elements um, treat it as qualified business income on the tax return and then attach a statement saying you're relying on this safe harbor right so if you're filing a 1065 1120s or your 1040 you need to attach a statement saying that we are um, applying the safe harbor under Rev Proc 2019-38 and so that's why we are treating this as a, uh, a qualified business activity so we're taking that 20% QBI deduction on our uh, net rental income all right so let's look at the last slide here for some examples uh, to try to illustrate you know the points here so this first example is going to be somebody where, where they do meet the the safe harbor elements right so we have a, a real estate llc here fake real estate entity llc it's a partnership filing a 1065 the llc owns one rental property so it's a large six bedroom home on a 10 acre lot in florida and they do have a tenant throughout all 12 months now the, the partnership has two owners we have john and jane and John is an owner that regularly is at the property taking care of it, right? So he does all the maintenance, he, he mows the lawn, does all the gardening, right? Remember, this is a big 10, 10 acre property, so it requires a lot of work. Now, John keeps timesheets of what he does throughout the year, and uh, the total hours he spends are 200 hours, right? So he is he's keeping weekly timesheets that shows when he gets to the property, all the work he's doing, how long he's there, and he's got 200 hours during the year. Now, also the property required a lot of repairs, right? Let's say it's an older home. So the, the real estate LLC hires a bunch of electricians, plumbers, general contractors, they come over, do all this work, and they do keep, uh, so John and Jane keep all of the invoices and all the logs showing how much time they're spending there. And the total hours on, on maintenance by all of these individuals was 75 hours for the year. So because the total amount of time logged performing real estate services, right? So by John and all these independent contractors, employees was 275 hours. So they're over the 250 hour requirement. It, under these circumstances, they meet the safe harbor, right? If they keep the separate accounting records, they've got contemporaneous records and 250 hours of rental services performed during the year, they can take the safe harbor. So file form 1065, attach the statement, uh, and then treat the earnings as qualified business income. And so if we look at a sample election statement here, so the, the return is prepared, uh, again, treating the activity as a qualified business income activity. We got the name of the uh, entity, so this is the, the relevant pass-through entity that is filing the return in the statement, tax ID number, and then the requirements that have been met, right? So we are saying that uh, solely for the purposes of 199 cap A, this real, rental real estate enterprise is a single trader business and it meets the elements of the rev proc and, and these three elements here, right? So we've got separate books and records. Um, the rental real estate enterprise was in existence for less than four years, so 250 more, uh, 250 or more hours of rental services are performed per year, right? Uh, and then the last element there, the taxpayer maintains these contemporaneous records, right? They've got the time reports, they've got the logs, they show that all, all the hours that were performed, who did the work, a description of services, and so on, right? Now, and then the very final element there is, is just listing which rental property this applies to. So again, this is a single uh, family home. They only own one rental property in this LLC. So we've got the rental property address uh, listed there. Now let's also look at an example where maybe it won't work, right? So we have the same uh, LLC, but let's say in, in this example, the LLC just owns a three bedroom home. So a much smaller single family home, um, and the property is located on a one quarter acre lot. So the first one, they got a 10 acre lot. Now they got a quarter acre and a retirement community. Um, so you can kind of see where this is going, all right? Much less work, right? So the property is rented for all 12 months during the year. Uh, John, the owner, again, he's still actively involved, right? So he visit the property once a week to mow the lawn, takes him under an hour each time. 
So you figure, okay, well, an hour a week, 52 hours a year spent mowing the lawn. Uh, the house is relatively new, so no repairs required during the year. Now, given the hours that John spends mowing the lawn, you know, doing a little bit of maintenance here and there, do, you know, managing the property, um, the hours are well below uh, what we had in example one. So given the few hours spent, uh, the LLC is not going to meet this 250 hour safe harbor. So in this example, we would not treat this as qualified business income because it's not a trader business. Now, even though they might not get the QBI deduction for this, you know, remember what's also important is this is a separate analysis from, you know, material participation. Right. So, you know, that's one of those issues where, OK, if, if John is actively you know, involved in the property, maybe he gets that active rental real estate, you know, exemption where you can deduct up to 25,000 of the losses. That's a completely separate analysis. This safe harbor is um, applicable, you know, just for purposes of figuring out whether you meet the, the 199 cap A uh, QBI uh, deduction eligibility, right? Okay, so uh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, obviously, you know, please feel free to leave a comment below. I try to answer as many as I can, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.